welcome back, Code Vlogs Episode 6, uh, Season 1, Episode 6, and uh, yeah, this is a pre-record of Episode 6. You're not going to see the original one because, well, reasons unmentioned. Anyway, we're continuing on with the project, and yeah, I guess you're just, you're just going to have to become a patron if you want to know the reason, because I posted it there. But uh, yeah, so consider supporting me if you want to see all the behind-the-scenes stuff that I post. Uh, not that this particular series is sponsored uh, by them, but uh, it is what it is. All right, so I want to talk about a few little things here I've that have changed. Mainly, it's well, I've corrected the VCPKG JSON manifest, and I want to talk about the errors I had originally so that you can learn because they're kind of hard to find. Uh, so you basically give the name of your project. It has to match this, except in this VC PKG JSON, it has to be all lowercase because reasons. I don't know. It's just how they made it. If, if the whole problem I had, like for months, was that this was capitalized. Yeah, let's not talk about it. For some reason they want it lowercase. Don't ask questions. Just follow the rules. All right. So basically, you give. I don't know if this version string honestly matters, but that's the version of the library right now. So I put it there and you list all the dependencies now these are the same that you search up and we say vc pkg so you do a uh, if you're not sure exactly what it's called you do a search for it and you find the exact name am i blind okay yeah i'm blind it's right there so i did that for all of them and made sure they're all all correct and so this there's two different modes of vc P K G. Gosh, it's gonna get old saying that. It is so hard to find proper documentation on this V C P K G. I know they have, they even have a website for it, and they don't even have their. Uh, I, okay, without complaining, I'll try to explain it because I literally can't find the document where I found this explanation anymore. It's it's somewhere out there. Okay, so basically, the normal way you use V C P K G is the way I showed in my original tutorial, and that's basically you install stuff and then you use it uh, and it just works. It's kind of globally installed for all your stuff basically once you do that integrate install thing. But uh, the other way of using it, and this is the manifest mode, this is called manifest mode. And that's where in your project structure, you have a VCPKG JSON and it is this whole setup of what you want to install for your project. And this is manifest mode. And you also have to put your project into manifest mode. So you right click on one of your top level projects, go to properties, find VCPKG under the configuration properties. Uh, this is kind of the general. Yeah. So th this uh, configuration, well, these first, what, five options? It doesn't matter which project you've clicked on. They're all the same, I think. No, that's not entirely true. Looks like. Well, anyway, you click on the one that you want to have libraries for, and you uh, make sure this use VCPKG manifest is set to yes, because if it's no, then it just won't use it, and it'll just go off your, what I'm going to call global mode, because or normal mode, global or normal mode, whatever, the way you normally install it. And this new way that I'm showing now is the manifest mode. So manifest mode is great because it's project specific, and it's automatic. You don't have to go type in commands. Basically, all you got to do is hit build. Let me set this as, well, we'll just build this one. And it'll do the thing. You don't see it here because I've already built it. But basically what it does is it goes and fetches all the libraries. And if you have any errors, it'll tell you about them. And you got to correct it. And that's it. So anyone who downloads this project now that has VC PKG installed, the first time they hit build, it's going to grab all the libraries automatically and just build. You literally don't have to do anything except download and hit build. Uh, of course, well, you do prerequisite, you do have to have VCPKG set up, but that's kind of a given. If you're on Windows, you probably already have it if you're a C++ developer. And if you don't, you should. All right, so that was the big thing. Uh, the big thing I've changed here since last episode, I did take quite a long break. And I also added to the gitignore all the stuff for VCPKG because it tried to like include all my installed libraries and everything. It was It was a nonsense mess. And you would think that you just go grab uh, the one off. Yeah. Maybe this is where I found the thing. 
All right, so you would think, you know, usually what I do when I want to get ignore globally for something that's pretty common is I just search for get ignore for whatever it is. And you do that, and you get the one from Microsoft. Uh, but they do have a slight error in here, which um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that or what, so I'm still kind of figuring that out. Where is it? Uh, so this here, install. It's actually called vcpkg underscore installed, which should be star in front of the installed, not after. So uh, they kind of messed that up a little bit. I don't know if it's worth correcting though, because I could be wrong, but basically I just use this ex these exact lines of code, except I put this star in front of installed, so it actually uh, ignored the proper folder, which we can go see if we look at our file explorer and go here. Yeah, it's this right here. Like that's the one you want to ignore. They put the star in the wrong space. So just FYI, if you get stuck there too and wondering why their docs are wrong, it's because they are. Even big companies screw up. It's true. All right, and what else have we changed? There's been a few other things. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I talked about a lot of this stuff, but yeah, it's gonna be a little better with the libraries going forward and for other people working on it, it should make a little more sense. Um, other than that, I was just kind of moving around some things and testing out some stuff. And there's not a whole lot of code differences at the moment. I'm kind of still about where I was. I'm working on getting the whole thing set up back to its functional base. And it's it's still sort of a mess. I could fix it real quick if I wanted to, but it'd be back to being a fixed mess, which I guess is better than a broken mess, right? So maybe I'll do that real quick. Uh, maybe, maybe. Because right now, like, uh, yeah, if we run this right now, we still get just a blank window. I've only got one popping up. It's going off this example project. Now I've considered removing this example project entirely and uh, moving most of the stuff that I want to test just into a core test file because uh, that sort of makes more sense, really. It's just kind of hard to test the windows popping up and uh, having to manually close it. I like tests to just be automatic and fly through them, but in this case, it's hard to do that with like a graph with a game engine type library. You can do it for a lot of the stuff, but then there's a lot of stuff where it's like they depend on you initializing previous stuff. And so how many times do you want to reinit the same thing in your test? Uh, just to test one other thing. So there's, there's some thoughts to, to this before I remove example project, but for now, example project is essentially a, true executable side project that just uses this library uh, and that's just a way of testing it and okay so i don't have the manifest on for this because it uses only the AA engine but your project might vary so one of the things i want to do is get this to a state where you can easily link AA engine and build your own project type of thing and I do have a pretty big side project in mind that's uh, in the deleted episode, uh, previous episode six that I'm not releasing because, uh, yeah, I'm not happy with it. And I said some things that I actually disagree with now. So yeah, I guess that's what happens. But basically one of the main things I, I, was, I talked about is basically that, uh, as you might guess by some of my recent videos, I'm moving away from game engine development, I'm moving more into game development because I am going to be working up a game and I kind of like put some test code and example project for the game I want to make. But the reality is I, let me see if I can find these. I don't even, I might've deleted them. Maybe it's the main character. Nah, it's all pretty much removed or main game. One of these has it player maybe. Yeah. Like some, some basic stats and inventory stuff. I was kind of starting out with like armor, resistance, dodge, you know, some, some stuff you would expect in, in a game. I started to kind of add that in and then I was like, wait, what am I doing? Am I actually going to start making my real game as this example project? No. So the, the long-term goal is to move all the test stuff into the actual test, delete example project. That'll probably be next episode. And then I want to have a total side private project that you guys will, uh, probably not see because well, it's private. Um, I don't know. I might consider giving access to like patrons or something, but really it's, it's sort of like me specific, not code tech and tutorial specific. So it's sort of a different, uh, scope, I guess you would say. 
I don't know. Let me know what you think about that down below. Well, anything to get people to sign up on Patreon. I don't want to have to cancel this channel. <laughs> oh, geez. Do we? I don't want to have that talk either, really. But uh, maybe, maybe another time or during a live cast or something. But yeah, that's the thing. Just moving into game development. Uh, this engine will still exist. It's still my library for building my, my game. But I'm only going to work on it insofar as it supports the game I'm building. I don't want to add every feature endlessly and try to do every little thing because I'll just be here endlessly, kind of like I talked about in that Don't Make a Game Engine video. Well, uh, yeah, I guess not much coding this time. I've got to actually kind of reacquaint myself now that I've got this manifest straightened out. That was the big thing and just kind of getting people updated on where I'm at and in the track of this and uh, what the plan is. And they're also... I guess I will say there is even a private version of Ancient Archer that is I'm putting under my like main company's name that will basically be doing all the game dev stuff. And yeah, I, I'm I'm a little mixed between making it all private. Like on one hand, it's a little bit much to to put out every little piece of code you do onto the internet. Because let's face it, coders, some days your code is like epic bad and you know you're going to not use it. And I'm basically doing that in a lot of days and I'm just putting it out there anyway just for people to follow along and learn from and have discussions. But uh, I think there's only been one or two comments on this whole series so far, but I am going to let it play out. I'm going to take probably a few uh, days off. And just kind of wait for it to sit for a while and see how it does. But uh, ultimately, this first code vlog series is a test. If it does well, we'll go for season two. If it doesn't do well, well, I, I probably don't want to spend a whole lot of time messing with it. Because uh, you kind of got to move on and just learn from your failures. That's the reality of life. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Matt out.